Hello everyone, greetings from Daba Studios, of course Daba TV also. My name is Chris Annie, I'm the founder of Daba.school, Africa's online education platform where people are learning about financial freedom, wealth creation and the digital economy. So this is the first episode of Internet Business Show and today with me I have the legendary internet marketer, author, businessman and the co-founder of Bio Properties, Ronald Zimora. Yeah. Ronald, good to see you today. Yeah, same here. All right. And today, we'll be sharing uh, about the business of internet marketing. So, Ronald, tell yeah. us more about you. Who is Ronald and Zimora? All right. Um, I'm a business person, um, family man. Um, I've, been, I've been doing business for 17 years. Wow. I started right from when I was in, in the university and, you know, I mean, you know, did it, struggled, got to the point where everything picked up and, you know, we're in a very, very good place now. I run, um, I, rather I'm a co-founder of two different companies, Bioware Properties and Digital Nexus Interactive. Mm -hmm. Bioware Properties was started uh, 2018. This and Exhaust Interactive was started in 2013. Oh, yeah. Wow, 17 years in the business space. Yep. So, what's the, what made you go into the business of, okay, well, first of all, I think the first question first is, what is internet marketing on its own? All right, internet marketing is, um, is just, is just the act of selling online, marketing online, showcasing your products, your services, using the internet that mm. is inter internet marketing interesting yeah now you've been in the business space for 17 years yeah. and I, I i heard you saying now we're in a better place yeah so uh what gave you the motivation or why did you choose this niche why did you choose this line of business in the internet marketing space okay um so i have to backtrack a little bit Look, fine um so up until probably year 2000, I didn't even know I was going to be, do business, mm. right? Because everything was set up for me. Prior to year 2000, I was going to be a priest. <laughs> yeah. In the name of yeah. God the Father. <laughs> yeah. And, <laughs> you know, I was going to be a priest and um, in 99, I decided I didn't want that anymore. So I left um, uh, the vocation, the vocation training and I started writing jam, you know, I started, tried to get into school and then in year 2000, my mom died mm. and I got admission the following year, 2001. And my mom died meant that um, we lost a huge pillar of support for my family. Mm. My dad was, uh, because of his business, he, was, he wasn't in the country, so it was just me, my siblings and you know communication with my dad was very very hard you know um coupled with the fact that his business had a lot of issues at about that same period so mm. you know you know communication was hard getting money was hard so for the first time i started thinking like so what do i do to get money mm. what do i do you know i started thinking about things i could do what could i sell you know i started thinking about you know, um, you know, basically, how do I just get money? Interesting. You know, not just a little bit of money, but a lot of money. A lot of money. You know, so I started thinking, started reading stuff. You know, every every Friday, or oh, you could find me in in the school library, my university library, because hmm. every Friday they would bring newspapers, foreign, local. So I would like read adverts and stuff. So basically, that's where all of the interest started. And in 2013, I was coming back to school. Uh, not 2013, 2003, actually. I was coming back to school. I was in a bus, the young Chagru. I won't ever forget because mm. it was like a defining moment. Interesting. And there was this guy that was sitting b beside. He had um, a magazine in his hand and he was a he, he just folded it and he was about to sleep. So I said, can I please read your magazine? Imagine. And he gave it to me and I opened it. And it was called Success Digest. Interesting. 
and for the first time I saw things that blew my mind you know I saw things about the internet I had a separate section where he was talking about internet marketing and the good thing was I had been using the internet for five years before then hmm. I started using the internet in 1998 you know um, when, when my dad's business was doing well I mean he had a two-rayer phone the phone was connected to the internet via satellite. It was before you know, all of yeah, <laughs> you know. So I I already had an idea how the internet worked. I could browse the internet. I could do a lot of that. So for me, for the first time, I was seeing this publication telling me that I could make money from the internet. From the internet. So I, I really took a keen interest, and then I also saw that I, I it really played into my skill. One of my skills, which was me writing. I loved writing. So I was like, okay, I think this is it. I think this is this is the thing. This is the thing I should be doing. Hmm. And here we are. Wow, wow, that's a long, long journey yeah. down to this space. Interesting. So yeah. your journey so far um, in the internet marketing industry. Yeah. What has been like your challenge? And I'm going to put it this way: you're going to share with us because you're going to share with us your challenges, mm -hmm. the catalyst that brought you to this level and the success okay you can wrap it up all like right that. so um so i mean i started selling in 2003. in 2003 there was no facebook there was no twitter there was no instagram yes right um everything was google was like two years old right in 2003 um it was just yahoo yeah um, yahoo Mail. alta vista um, I'm, I'm, some of the viewers probably don't even know the, some of these names, like Cos.com. Those were like the search engines of the of that time. Um, and then there was, um, uh, you know, the, the advertising platform that we used to use then, right? And you could use GeoCities, which was also which was owned by Yahoo. You know, to GeoCities basically worked like a forum, what mm. we call forum these days, but they used to call it message boards mm. at the time. Mm. You know, and so what we did was it, it was really hard, first of all, because there was really very little you could trust. There was really nobody aside success that yes, you know, that you had to wait for one full month before the next edition came oh. out. There was really nobody else to explain anything oh. to you so you know but i would go online you know i would try to browse and search for things you know i would look at the gurus of the day the gary harbards you know um the alan Bechards, a lot of those guys and but again being from nigeria and living in nigeria extremely extremely hard mm. so what we could do at that time was we could buy a virtual credit card, mm. VCC. Now, to buy it, you had to pay someone who would pay someone who would pay someone who would pay someone. Stress. And how do you know this is happening? Because when you finally get the details of the VCC, you see that it was forwarded, forwarded to somebody who forwarded to somebody who forwarded to somebody. Right? And, you know, and then we could now take that card and now go online and buy stuff. Or pay for advertisement, right? And so we would do this, and then I was promoting eBay. eBay was new, mm. so eBay was paying five dollars for every person that you got to sign up for eBay, mm. right? So I was promoting eBay. So I would buy fifty dollars worth of VCC, and I'll run adverts, and I'll get a bunch of people sign up, and they'll pay me five dollars per person. But now you had to now wait for that money to come so that you could now be able to change it and then now buy more advertising. What was the medium of receiving those money then? <laughs> okay, that was another big issue. So the only way you could receive it then was via paper. Interesting. Right? And paper was also new at the time. So, but it basically restricted Nigeria. So you couldn't even use a Nigerian address. But luckily, my ex-girlfriend had relocated to the US at the time, so I would talk to her. She didn't even know what paper I was until I told her. So she opened a PayPal account, and I would use her PayPal email, and the money would get sent to her, and mm. then she sent me Western Union. Interesting. You know, so 
and so you have to wait maybe like two weeks three weeks one month for all of these things to happen and then you have to buy another vcc and then repeat the entire tedious tedious stuff so now going from there and um i was a very happy person when internet penetration began to deepen in Nigeria, more and more cyber cafes, and not even individuals, right? Cyber cafes. More and more cyber cafes springing up. On general power. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, and uh, from there, you know, a lot more people started starting to get interested and in using the internet, you know, a lot of, a little bit more awareness. Mm. So now, a little bit more services. And then the banking sector now started moving to the internet. Mm. Because even then, there were no, there internet, were no internet banking. Cards, there was no internet, internet banking. Yeah. So now, you know, we could now say, okay, we could go to Zenit and get a card. I can't remember what the card was called then. It was one card Zenit used to issue mm. back then. And then UBA started issuing an Africa card, something called an Africa card. And so it got a little bit easier, you know, and now, so now we could just have our own cards here locally you know but still tedious because a lot of things you have to figure it out for yourself you have to do a lot of testing what you're saying is i'm trying to just imagine the stress it's the difference between crazy. internet marketing when you started mm -hmm. and my own time now now it's like <laughs> everything is now a lot yeah. easier yeah even with all the facebook ad ban i'm looking at it like man this was like really, really I'm stressful. Like it's, because it's nothing. This is, Facebook banning you is nothing. This is simple. My yeah. own time, our own time is coming soon because getting to be on the internet now mm -hmm. with your free Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, uh, Gmail, even uh, Google My Business, things have gotten yeah. so easier now. Absolutely. So tell us now the success story. All right, so um, I think I started... Groundbreaking results from your internet marketing yeah, game. Yeah, so between 2003 and 2009, struggled a lot, right? Mm. Tried a lot of things, affiliate marketing. I mean, tried a lot of things. I wrote, I, I think I sold my first ebook in 20, 2007. I wrote the sales letter myself mm. uh, because I didn't even have money to pay anybody to write it for me or even design the site. I was on front page, Microsoft front page, to design the website at the time. And then after, this, after I had set up the page, I, I suddenly realized, wow, I need a sales letter for this. Wow. Okay, now I have to learn how to write a sales letter. So I started learning how to write a sales letter. And then I found out that, man, I actually enjoy this, right? And so when the book was ready, I had converted it to PDF. Okay, so how the hell do I sell this sell. stuff now? And then there was this guy, Rob Pannell, he's Australian, I was on his list. Mm. So I sent him an email, I said, I've been on your list and I love your emails, and I've written this book that I think will be beneficial to people on your list. If you're interested, you can, you can promote it to them. And he emailed me and said, I will take 80% of the sales. Wow. So I was like, okay, fine. I just wanted the to sell. sell. So, now I couldn't use PayPal to get the money, so he used his own PayPal account. So all of the funds went to him. And after about a month, he sent me $2,000. Wow. So basically what he told me was that the book made around $10,000. $10, because he kept $8,000, he sent me $2,000. And I was like, I was overjoyed. Wow. Because it was like early December, so December was late that year, <laughs> you know? So it's, um, uh, that was like my first big result, but then I squandered the money like an idiot. Wow. Because I went back to square one, you know, not having any money to having $2,000 and then to not having any money. Wow. So for the first time, I had to tell myself, okay, you need to get, have, you need to be structured. You need to do this thing in a, in a structured and uh, formulaic way. So I said, okay, so who do I learn from? Who, who do I go to and really understand the business around this stuff? So incidentally, Success Digest, which I had been reading from 2003, mm. uh, um, had this event, they were doing a seminar, they were doing, they called it the Information Marketing Business Workshop. Great. And so it was going to be in April 2008. I was in final year, so I just made sure that 
everything I was doing, submitting projects, all of that, that I was done with. I just submitted my project and I just left Umahia because that was where my school was and I came back to Lagos and I was at the event for six days, Monday through Saturday, you know, and it was like, I was like, man, this is, this is just amazing. But then again, I was starting from zero, so I had to start from scratch again, mm. you know, ran my first ad, had only one sale. I actually lost money on the ad because the ad cost me three five. And I made a sale of 2,500. But I was happy because for the first time, someone in Nigeria to buy a product. bought something from me. So, um, so I wrote an article and I said seven reasons why the information marketing business workshop may not work for you. Mm. And I said, okay, I was at this event and you know, we learned all of this stuff, but these are the seven things that I think they should have done better. Mm. And somehow that article found its way to the publisher of Success Digest, Dr. Sonny uh, Emmanuel Jaguese. And I got a call one day. I said, Are you Ronald Zimora? I said, Yeah. I said, Okay, so I'm, I'm the PA to Dr. Sonny Jaguese, and he wants you to have a meeting with you next Tuesday, 4 p.m. And I was like, Ah, man, he has seen this thing. Right. I nearly didn't go because I thought maybe he had some policemen <laughs> waiting to arrest me, you know. I mean, I criticized their stuff. But um, I went there and he met me, me. The first thing he said when he saw me was like, I love your article. Interesting. I was like, wow. You know, so I was like, and you know how to write. I have another event coming up next week. I want you to speak. Mm. I didn't even say anything. I want you to speak there. Would you be would you be willing to speak there? I said, yes, sir, of course I will. You know, and so the following week I was there, like 800 people in the hall. And when I was done speaking, everybody was crowding around me, you know, like this superstar. And I was like, what the heck is going on? <laughs> you know, everybody was like, so what do you have? Do you have a book I want to buy? Do you have this? I'm like, well, I don't even, I don't have anything. What about right. PDF? It's okay. not selling. Okay, now, that, that, I'm, I'm, coming, I'm coming to that, okay. right? You know, because, uh, you know, you mentioned, like, you know, what are the issues? Yeah, the faced, challenges. Yeah. Challenges. Yeah. So that was, like, my biggest challenge. And it's something that I learned. And I, and I think it's something everybody who gets in, in this industry needs to learn. Mm. That when something is working, you work it. When you something is working, working, you work it you to work the it. very, very end. You milk it to the very end. Because there's this tendency to create something and sell it and make maybe a million, mm. maybe two million. And you relax. And then you relax and you're like, okay, what what's, else, the next what thing? Are, what's the next thing? And then you abandon it and then you start creating something entirely different. Mm. When probably this could have done 200 million, maybe 500. Mm. Right, so we basically create ideas and kill them prematurely, mm. and start another one. Another one instead of milking, milking the major the one that's been working. You know, so you know, and all of these people, I just kept saying, "Oh, I don't have anything." It was stupid in which respect, right? Um, but basically, that's where all of that started, and I started writing for success ideas. I wrote practically like 90% of their sales letters for the remaining part of 2018, a, bit, a better part of 2000, 2008, a better part of 2009, and uh, bef by then I had created my own products, e-books, started running seminars, and then in 2010, early 2010, I decided, you know what, there's this, an emerging uh, awareness about digital marketing on the corporate side, mm. not just with individuals. Individual. A lot of companies were beginning to understand that what there was a lot, of, a lot of promise in promoting via digital marketing. So I decided mm. to set up a, a digital marketing firm. So I created a company called Profit Marketing System, which still exists mm. actually now. Um, so I started pitching corporate organizations, businesses. So I did that all of 2010, 2011, signed up 
lots and lots of them, Naira beds, um, 1960 beds, um, Ebony bed. We signed up quite a number of bedding companies. We still have about four of them on our roster now. Yeah. And um, Enlightened Media, these day newspapers, the uh, Reverend Summer Day, Miss Day Star. Success, yeah. So now you see, we're going really, really big, mm. right? And you know, and in 2013, I met my business partner, and I found out that we had a very, very good synergy. He brought a lot of a lot of the things that I was weak at. You know, he was really, really good at them. For example, mm. I'm an idea person. I can come up with one million of them, mm. but, but sitting down and actually pushing through mm. and getting them started execution and, and executed and followed through i really wasn't too good with that he mm. was really really good at that mm. because he's a background person he doesn't mm. even like the limelight mm. so we decided to just band our businesses together so mm. we merged it and we renamed it digital Nexus Nexus. interactive so from what um, I, from what you've just said now there are several catalysts i could pick yeah uh parts where dr sonny played a role bringing you in so that means that because the first mm. time i got one inspiration and let me say this secret now i'm sure you'll be you'll be you'll be you'll be amazed with this yeah while i was in my year one back i think 2006 in my school back then mm. i had this passion for teaching people online from an article i read on success digest mm. so then it was do a cd so my then the kind of things i saw then was how to that once you put up Ending about how to how to do so yeah how to do cd mm. how to do this that if you put it in a book or a cd then i was in enugu you could sell so that was like my first major listen concerning oh teaching mm. and making money from from teaching yeah. now from that catalyst dr sonny was there as a catalyst wow and i could nice. see that from what you said aside dr sonny uh the part of him bringing you to the Success Digest, mm -hmm. the exposure, mm -hmm. and you realizing that there was a product in there to still sell to people when, they, when you had those teachings and mm -hmm. there was nothing for you to sell. And the next part was now your co-founder. Yeah. Uh, who's the person? Tony Yamato. Great. He's one yeah. of the greatest copywriters yeah. we know from Africa. He's really, really good. Even though he's a, he's a, <laughs> he's a, a background kind of person. Yes. Yeah. So from the lessons here on the success, on the challenge, and the, I, I want to focus on the catalyst. We have Dr. Sonny there. We have both your partner there. And mm -hmm. what is this trying to say in the internet marketing space? Synergy works. Mentorship works at the end of the day. Let's go to the next one. Let's go to the next one. What would you have done differently now that, with what you know now, mm -hmm. what you, would you have done differently when you started? Okay, so what I would have done differently was to not abandon projects. Mm. You know, like I, I just said earlier, you create something and it's converting, it's working, people love it, and Make then you it. abandon it mm. because you think, you know what, okay, I need to start working on the very next thing. Mm. You know, if I had, I, I created a lot of brilliant, brilliant ideas. Let me say something else that will shock you. We, I, I had a, a I said, uh, in, I started buying crypto in 2016. Wow. Um, because we, there was a dollar crunch. Because mm. now we run ads for companies. Most of the platforms we run ads on are foreign, right? And we need to pay them. So we have to source dollars and pay. In 2016, that was like, it was hard to find, to even buy dollars. Dollar. So, and we were getting all these requests from our the platforms we're advertising with mm. saying you know sending us invoices and then out of one day i just got tired so i just sent one of them an email i said can we pay in bitcoin mm. and he said oh yeah you can pay us in bitcoin. because they knew what the issue was so we started buying bitcoin so we bought because at like 750 per dollar per dollar 800 <laughs> like we bought i think the first i think we bought like 25 wow first because we, we were going to, we were supposed to pay one of them around ninety thousand dollars, so we bought like twenty five, and then we bought a, probably a, around another ten or eleven. I can't remember. I have to check. And so, and then we started paying them. But before, prior to that, I had told uh, Oloya Kialabi 
that we needed dollar to be able to pay you know, the, advertisers. Uh, the advertisers. So they also didn't have. But then he called me up one day and said, okay, do you guys still need the dollars? We have dollars now we can send to you. So I said, yeah, send. So, so they sent some and then I was like, okay, let's just, let's just leave the Bitcoin and start the Bitcoin that was left, mm. right? We had probably spent, used maybe around 70% of the Bitcoin we had bought. So we, so we left that and then we paid the remaining money. We just sent the dollars. And then I practically just forgot about it. Wow. And November 2018, this thing now went up to 5,000, 6,000. And by December 2018, it was like 16,000, something. And I was like, what the heck is, what the heck is going on here? Right? So I really took a, an active interest. That was when I was like, OK, you really need to start 2017. This yeah. 20, yeah. 2017, yes. Yeah. You know, 2017, you know, so I was like, okay, I really need to study. So I now f like focus and started studying it. Um, and then I thought to myself, maybe, maybe some other people might be interested in learning about this Bitcoin thing. Mm. So I just sent a mail to my leader. I said, so this is my story with crypto. Uh, you know, uh, I have another crazy crypto story, but probably that is going to be for another, another story. Uh, that would be for another, uh, another time. But if you're interested in learning this stuff, mm. right, just click here, sign up to this other email and I will just share stuff that I've learned with you. So I got like probably over 2000 people who signed wow. up. So I did a webinar and then at the end of the webinar, I made an offer. So I said, okay, so I'm going to put out a newsletter. I'm going to study this stuff. I'm going to take my time, study this stuff. Mm. I'll put out a newsletter for 12 months. If you're interested, it's 50,000. I had over 100 people who paid for it. Wow. So I was like, <laughs> wow. So I was like, ah, OK, now you have to study this stuff. That's 5 million. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And funny thing is that they paid in Bitcoin. Wow. Because I said the payment was going to be in Bitcoin. I said, yeah, well, we want to learn cryptocurrency. So now go open start an learning. account start learning you understand start, start using learning. it so so they paid in bitcoin and so every month i'll put out a newsletter i was you know i signed up to a bunch of other crypto newsletters so i was learning from different sources and then by the end of 2017 i just i was like you know what this i beg i'm tired i'm not doing this stuff again so i left it <laughs> you know so uh, and plus the fact that you know the bear market now crept in 2018 yeah you know so a lot of people got disenchanted you know a lot of people were like you know my email will be flooded ah the market is going down I'm what should like, i do please i don't have to do i don't want to <laughs> deal with all this stuff right so so i said i'm not putting out the newsletter again no more i'm just going to just you know the btc that we have i'm just going to just keep adding to it any chance I get and that's it mm. you know so so big mistake was launching stuff and not really driving Fooling it mm. to mm. the end if I had a chance to do it to do things all over again you know that is what I will change interesting lesson here start and see it to finish yep. start and see it to finish we're still on the internet business show live from Daba Studios yep. and with me is Ronald and Zimora, a legendary internet marketer, businessman, co-founder, Bible Properties, is an author and a teacher too. And Ronald, um, yeah. on our closing remark, I want you to give an advice to young folks who are coming up in the internet marketing industry. Okay, what, 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 what would be your advice? What would be, I know we've shared several lessons from mentorship, mm. association, uh, following up on projects, milking things out. Mm -hmm. But you know, when somebody wants to come in and start using the internet to sell internet marketing, what are these advice you could just give to the person plus any resource from you so far mm -hmm. that they need to know? It could be a book, it could be a magazine and whatever. Just share with us on this. Okay, closing. so I think, um, <clears throat> I think um, the most important thing that I think every new bee should do is to 
as quickly as possible because internet marketing is wide. I mean, mm. there is affiliate marketing, mm. there's CPA, there's um, information marketing. If you can still expand, if you can still expand on those areas, yeah, just maybe like six, seven niches in the internet marketing space. Affiliate marketing, CPA. Yeah, affiliate marketing. CPA is also like a branch of affiliate marketing, but it's grown so big now that it's, it can it's be now categorized on its, on its own. own. Right? Um, information marketing, blogging, um, what email is, marketing, like, email marketing, consulting. Like we do with digital nexus, we've earned crazy amounts of money with that company. Like wow, crazy, crazy. Wow, I'm talking. 100 200 million a year wow like crazy amounts you know but uh we are doing it on a scale where maybe newbies might find it difficult right to do because we sell like to corporate so mm. we charge them a ton of money also mm. but anybody could also do it and maybe bring in something i mean i've i've had lots of people on my newsletter mm. right who who made maybe as much as five thousand dollars every month mm. you know just providing services to companies right so so consulting is part of it youtube youtube is a profession now yes on its own yes right um a friend of mine you probably know him he's a musician he's called pichon uh one of the skooky one yeah, one, yeah, one half yeah. of the skooky music yeah, group yeah, so yeah. um so he does these videos where he shares dating advice but he he promotes primarily using instagram mm. but that guy has grown so big he's like he gets like foreign dating gurus interview him he has a book that's over eighty thousand copies wow like all all right from here so there's a lot there's a lot you know the important thing is for people to basically figure out so this is me these are my skills that i have mm -hmm. currently so these are all of these niches that are available affiliate marketing information marketing blogging right youtube, um, YouTube consulting email marketing email marketing facebook advertisement, CPA, facebook advertisement social media management mm. all of this stuff mm. right so now based on where you are and the skills that you have where can you get started mm. very very fast and mm. where can you deepen where can you deepen your knowledge in mm. so that you are known for something mm. you are known for that one thing right so for example people know me as oh if you want to sell right if you if you want to have your stuff sell go talk to these guys interesting right so because the, the the better you are known for one thing, the easier it is for people to just come to you for that one thing. For example, if I want to do, I mean, I've spoken to you, with you about this a couple of times. Anything I want to do about crypto, never mind the fact that I said buying all of this stuff in 2016, I yeah. will come to you, right? True, true. Right, straight up, because you are like the face of it. Yes. You yes. know, so... It's important for people to be able to very quickly discover that one thing, that one niche that they can focus on and deepen their knowledge of it okay. and not try to jump from one thing to another because it's going to waste their time mm. and it's going to waste their money. Interesting. And, you know, their attention is scattered. Wow. Powerful lessons there. Yeah. Consistency. Start with one, expand on it and grow from there. It's been an interesting session, the first episode of Internet Business Show, and I know you love it. Please remember to subscribe, like, share this video with your friends, your family, your loved ones, and everyone. Ronald, share with us the books you have. Let them project it on the screen. Okay. The books um, you've written, the resources, and how we can get it. All right. So I have, I have three books now. The first one is called Sell Your Brain. Um... Okay. It's called Sell Your Brain. Uh, I have a second one called Triangle of Profits. Triangle okay. of Profits is basically about marketing. Okay. Just a purely uh, uh, marketing book. And then I have uh, a third one called I Will Teach You Business. So that's, that has more of like my ideas about business, mm. everything that I've learned so far. We have an, an update for I Will Teach You Business coming up, right? Um, maybe in about, in about three or four weeks, we're going to have... 
an update for that coming up. So, but the thing is, we print these books and they sell out so far, so we don't even have any copies. So what I would, I would rather people do is just go join my newsletter. Okay. So I will teach you business.com slash join. Okay. Once they so they can get the, updates about the books exactly. and every other thing. It's been an interesting session with you. So I'm yeah, super, so super yeah. honored, grateful. I've learned a lot and I look forward to more episodes with you. Absolutely. And, and of I course... Have a Bitcoin story to tell. <laughs> that will be another episode again. <laughs> and exactly. wow, it's been a lovely time on the Internet Business Show. Yeah. I'm Chris Annie, founder of Dabado School. And yes, I am super, super excited that this will be airing right in your TV, in your YouTube channel, Instagram, anywhere in the world you're watching. And please, like I said again, don't forget to subscribe, like, share this video, and use the comment section and let us know what have you learned. What do you also want to learn in the next edition? So like, come your way next time. Success.